Hey folks, welcome. I wanted to make an introduction video where I take a few moments and introduce myself to the flight sim world and let you know who I am, where I'm coming from. I am probably like about 82% of the flight simming community. I'm an old guy who sits in a dedicated room and just enjoys the heck out of different aspects of aviation. I love the technology. I love the freedom. Um, I love both GA and commercial flying. I am a real life pilot. I spent a lot of years in the U.S. military and I made a short video. Uh, actually, I made a 14 minute video of my flight sim setup. And what I want to do is play that for you now, not the whole 14 minutes, but the first seven minutes of it, which will introduce you to where I'm coming from. But what I'd like you to notice in the background is exactly how long it takes for Microsoft Flight Simulator to load into a flight. And the reason I want you to note that is because today, I'd like to introduce you to two, in my opinion, critical pieces of software. One is MSFS add-on linker, which you can get from flightsim.to for free. And the other one is called shell extension linker, which creates symbolic links. And uh, these two files working together will cut down the load time of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So go ahead and enjoy these first seven minutes of this video. And then um, in while you're watching it, uh, in the background, imagine it takes all this time to load up into a flight. And uh, you could make your breakfast, cook your eggs and bacon, take your dog out for a walk, all those things. Uh, instead of what you really want to be doing, which is flying an airplane. My name is Regal Eagle. I'm also known as Seattle Aviator. My real name is Brad. I live in Minnesota. This is my world of flight sim aviation. Enjoy. Hey, folks. I'm hoping you'll take just a moment and ignore the junkiness and ugliness of much of this room as it will be put more into place in the near future. But what I wanted to introduce you to is my new flight sim setup starring this 85 inch mega television. Now it's not my first venture into big screen. This 65 inch used to be my main display there straight ahead of me. And now it's my secondary display there's the 85 inch kicking up Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's a smaller 32 inch, which I'm not sure exactly what use I'm going to put that one to. And then just for kickers, there's a fourth screen over here. Now, generally speaking, you can never have enough screens, especially in the old FSX days when you could have an exterior view or a view on an overhead or a, a particular view that you wanted to have always available having that extra screen really comes in handy now so here's the main screen you can see that my garmin gns 530 made by real sim gear is connected using fsuipc we're just going through the last few stages of setting up microsoft flight simulator here on top i have my track ir uh, sensor which I wear on top of my ball cap and I also have my Razer headphones just below that is the Bravo throttle right now it's set up for a Boeing two engine jet but of course you folks who have it know that you can configure it for four engines or for single prop or twin prop or a, a whole lot of configurations but uh, this is the Bravo th throttle and my favorite trim wheel and my number one landing gear I usually use is the Bravo throttle gear and the flaps set on the Bravo throttle. When it comes to tuning the radios on a small plane, I use this uh, real sim gear GNS 530. There's no screen on it. I depend on the screen in the cockpit view for my screen, but I can 
roll around the CDI and the HD and the heading uh, bug and the altitude bug and the speed bug. And I can tune all the radios. I can flip flop the VF, the number one com, number two com, number one nav, number two nav. Um, I can move, zoom in and out on the range. I can enter waypoints. I can enter VORs. So this really is my go-to and I'm really happy with that purchase. I also have a number pad on the side of my mouse. And what I use this for is when I'm using default ATC and I want to respond with a number, it'll have a, a list of numbers. I can respond one, two, three, four, five with the numbers on the number pad. Um, and it's a quick, easy way of talking to ATC in a hurry. Uh, so right below the Bravo throttle is my keyboard. Boy, I wish there was a way of flight simming without the mouse and keyboard, but they are certainly a necessary part. Uh, not plugged in right now, but available for use are my uh, SATIC panels. Um, they're there for future use. Um, right now, the throw distance, the reach distance is a little on the far side. Uh, I, I can reach them. I can turn on the master power and hit the ignition switch and do some other things, but it's a bit of a bit of a distance. Now, for Airbus aircraft and for certain certain other applications, um, well, I'll tell you, one half of this I always use. These two outer levers become my vertical and my horizontal view axis. So on an exterior view, no matter what the simulator is, I can spin the plane around on the two axes using these outer throttle levers. Now they're not used very often for aircraft because I don't fly four engine jets that often. But for a two engine Airbus, this is perfect. Notice its position right where an Airbus throttle would usually be. And I have all the functionality uh, if, if I ever should have a four engine Airbus aircraft, it's all here set up uh, and ready to go. Now, one of my joys, oh, here's the uh, Gladiator NXT joystick. And I don't have any aircraft controls on this. I have a, my uh, hat and my uh, view sw or switches are set up for views. Uh, sometimes if I'm using Pushback Express or uh, Better Pushback, I use some of these buttons for those uh, commands to external programs. Uh, I have in the past used this throttle for not only uh, view panning, but also as a throttle in a single engine airplane. But I don't do that much anymore. Um, but this... Uh, uh, and I, if you've had the Gladiator before, you know it's a wonderful joystick. This NXT has the fact that it doesn't bounce around on the return. It's got a, a very stabilized return, and it's really a, a the, probably the most modern flight control you can get. Along with the pendular rudder pedals down here, um, toe brakes, rudder left and right. Now, usually on my chair, I have a butt kicker for feeling the uh, cracks in the asphalt and uh, other things. But right now I don't. And here's one of my pride and joy. Notice it's directly available to my left hand. This is my orb weaver. And the orb weaver, I got this idea from another flight simulator center. And this is my main view controls. Upper left corner toggles between exterior and exterior. Then the next nine buttons, four on the top and five below it, these are the uh, controls that I have set up on my own. And then the 10 down here are the default views. So if I'm first starting off with an airplane, I'll start with the default views. And then if I find I, I want to have a custom view for something, then I'll create it and use these top nine buttons. But the top one, uh, I should say, the top upper left corner and also this pad down on my thumb, those are both toggles that will go inside and outside the flight deck. So here we are, we're all set up for a flight. Uh, my last flight was... 
Isn't that amazing how long it took to get that flight simulator finally kicked up? Well, that's what we're going to avoid today. Let's say you just bought an add-on, and if you're like me, a lot of them come from Orbix. Here's the Orbix. Maybe you got them from the community downloader. Maybe you got them from the fly-by-wire installer. All sorts of different places. But wherever you get your... Maybe you got it from the sim market. Maybe you got it from uh, FS Dream Team. Maybe you went to flightsim.to. But you've got add-ons from all sorts of different sources. And those sources are monitoring your add-ons. For instance, here at Orbix, I can go into my products. And here's a list of everything I've purchased from Orbix. Isn't it this extensive? All sorts of programs and uh, monster, monster, and they're all being monitored. And when you buy them, you choose a library. So here in settings and library, I basically have six files. And I'm going to say these kind of out of order. Uh, my first one is base. Base is for utilities and global products. And then I have aircraft. That's self-explanatory. And then I have four major geographic areas of the world uh, here. I have uh, Asia, Europe, Americas, and Oceania. So those are the six files. Everything from uh, Orbix goes into one of those libraries. And it, it's being monitored by this Orbix software. Everything from the community downloader goes into its default um it goes into its folder and it's being monitored. And also the uh, fly-by-wire, the Salty 747, those are installed and they're in their own folders as well as uh, FS LTL flight injector, all in their own folders. And for the most part, as much as I can, I try to put those folders in one central place. I want them to be on the hard drive and on the same drive as the flight sim to make the load times easy. And that one full reciprocal of every add-on in the world is called MSFS add-ons. There it is in all of its glory. Those are the six folders. Base, I got a one called absolute base for things I just absolutely have to have for every single flight. And then base, you can... Go in here and you can select between general aviation and commercial aviation, or you can select certain uh, utilities you'd like to use. Uh, aircraft, and then the four uh, geographic areas of the world. And when you go into one of these, what you're going to see is some unnecessary files. Here's a file, MSFS. I would love to just push Americas, and then have all my America files right here. But that's not the case, because when Orbix makes a file, it creates this subdirectory called MSFS. And that's not the worst of it. So there's an unnecessary subdirectory. Now you have all your files. But when Orbix creates a file, this is a very convenient title. The uh, Kelowna... International Airport, uh, Charlie Yankee Lima Whiskey. That sounds great, but when you click on it, what do you get? You get another unnecessary layer of file. This, In this case, it's community, and you click on that, and finally, you come down to the guts, the big file with the stuff in it. There's the stuff. And Orbix in many cases, did not make the software. It's just a redistributor. So the the whoever made this file is usually in the file name. In this case, it's FS Sim Studios Airport, and uh, that's the that's the name. So so that the Orbix monitoring program can keep the files updated, there's two cardinal rules. Number one rule is don't move the file away from the library that you put it in. And number two rule is never change the name of this file or any of the file structure. Don't change the name of that community or the Colono or MSFS. Don't change the names. 
keep the file structure the same, and you will be nice and happy having updated software. Well, that makes it hard. If all of this is in your community folder, your load time will be just like it was on that video that you just watched. It will be monster it will be a monster to handle. So the answer to that is symbolic links. And I'm going to go to um, Edge here. And this is a program you really, really need to download. I always kind of forget what it's called. It's called uh, uh, Hard, Hard Link Shell. And find this. Find this program. Link Shell Extension by Shinigal. It won't hurt your computer. It's very small, and it will allow you, instead of using the computer by uh, DOS command prompt to make a symbolic link between two programs, this will have a more user-friendly imb uh, embedded into the uh, Windows way of making symbolic links. And what symbolic links do is allow you to have a monster community folder, but yet the size of it is almost nothing because the the guts folder, the folder with all the stuff in it, is located elsewhere. It's not located on your simulator. So get this program, download it. You will be very, very happy. So the other program you need to have, in my opinion, is MSFS add-on linker. This get you can get from flightsim.to for free. Absolute necessity in my case. And what I, what I've done is I have taken that. Okay, I've taken that. Okay, what I've done is I have taken that folder. Here's my hard drive. Here's where all my add-ons are, MSFS add-ons. And there are the six basic folders with all the hard stuff in them. And then I made another folder. And this folder I call Super Add-ons. You can choose whatever name you like. You can call it, you know, name it after your cat or, or your boyfriend or whoever. Um, and this has the same basic six folders. I put the numeral one in front of base just to keep it above. Now, these folders are symbolically linked to these folders. These in MSFS add-ons is the big, thick folder with the big, thick uh, add-on in it uh, all the way down in its file structure. So we go into America, so we can go into MSFS, and then we go into uh, Brampton, Cal Caledon Airport, then we go down to Community, and then we finally find Roman Design made this airport. Uh, it's called CN CNC3. Okay, so now you have another folder over here called Super Add-ons. What you do is take the folder with the big add-on on it, right-click, show more options and if you've downloaded that shell extension you're going to have some new choices right click now one of your choices is going to be pick link source choose pick link source like that that not the whole file but just the information about the location of that file now can be put somewhere else on your computer. And we're going to put it over here in this new folder called Super Add-ons. So here's the six basic folders. This is an airport in the Americas. So we'll choose Americas. Right-click in an empty space. Show more options. And then here's a new menu item that you have called drop as symbolic link drop as symbolic link and now that roman designs airport is now here in the flight sim okay roman designs airport see why there okay there's the one i did earlier and here's the one i just did it says symbolic link we can throw that in the trash. It's just a copy, but um, there it goes. Um, 
Now, if you click into this, oh, what's going on here? Oh, it's empty. Oh, goodness. Make sure. Well, just make sure. I will make sure that it's here. I don't want to go. Let's just delete this whole thing. Okay, now we will show more options and we will. Oh, I can do this again. Okay. Pick link source right there. Go over to Americas. Show more options. Drop as symbolic link. Bloop, there it is. Now when you click into it. Oh, what's going on here? There's the whole structure. There's all the file structure all in place. But there's no guts to it. It's like a shadow. It weighs almost nothing. So. When you go into add-on linker, here are those same folders. And whenever you start a flight, oh, here's what your community folder looks like right now. The purple folders are is recent acquisitions, things that I just went ahead and there are eight folders in the community folder that are actual real live folders with all their internals. Right now, they're just flights traffic because I just acquired it. I haven't had a chance to move it around at all. Uh, FS2 Cruise Command Center. This program is rather finicky. It likes being where it's at. And some programs, uh, the maker of the software has made it very difficult to put the program anywhere but the community folder. So those are in purple. Then the blue ones are linked into the community folder from a different location. These come from FS Stream Team, and they're located on a different part of the community, uh, computer, but they're also joined by Symbolic Link. And then the ones that I control directly here in MFSS add-on linker are the ones that are in green. There's one file that uh, needs a little help. Anyway, so over here, let's say we're, we're planning a flight today in the central United States. So we go to base and I choose out what I want to have on this flight. I'll use the Flow Pro app. I'll use the Fly Tampa libraries. Whenever you have a flight there's and you have a library, always include the libraries. You never know if libraries are going to be needed or not. Uh, I want Black Square to use real taxiway signs. There's another library. Floyd's Clouds is available at flightsim.to. Get Floyd's Cloud. You will not regret it. It's a wonderful set of uh, of clouds. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Base coverage for photogrammetry cities for the United States. You'll want that. Now, don't ever change these names because then you won't be able to monitor them. But if, you, if you're ever sure of what these are, what the heck is this uh, base coverage map US? Well, you've got a couple ways of helping you out. You've got this written title ex explanation of what it is. And you also often have these little pictures that'll help you determine what you're looking at that come with the file. So uh, here, area and air XNA. What the heck is that? It's regional environment for North America. And uh, and then the great thing about when you made the symbolic link into super files, there was no file substructure. In other words, when you came over here to super add-ons, and you come into one of these folders. There's no, they're all symbolic links. There's no hard folders here, and there's no layer upon layer of, of uh, folders. So when you're in the linker, for the most part, what you're looking at is on-off toggle switches. Let's say, so right now we have Floyd's Epic Cloud selected, and it's in the community folder, and you can see it right there, Floyd's Epic Clouds. But if we didn't want to use it, we deselect it, icon turns to red, and it's no longer over here in the community folder. So just by quickly scanning up and down, you can see what you do have and what you don't have 
installed in the community folder. Uh, there's the Flow app and all of its widgets. And, and the hardest one to set up is the base because this uh, is utilities and regional things, emergency lights. We're going to use some birds. I love the birds programs for the central and Midwest United States. Uh, things flying, traffic in sight, and some uh, enhanced airport graphics. So once you've got the base set up, that's the hardest part. Toggle what you'd like on or off. The next file is aircraft, and that's really self-explanatory and very easy. Just simply choose the airplane you want to fly with. And today we're flying PMDG's 737-700 and its livery package. Select those two, and aircraft is done. The next file is almost as simple, and these are the four geographic regions of the world. America is Asia, Europe, Oceania. Our flight today is in the central U.S., so you want to choose the airport you're departing from. FS Dream Teams, Louisville. You can see it's Louisville International Airport. There's its ICAO code, and there's a picture of what it looks like. You can also choose our destination airport. Also, if you're flying into a region like Chicago or Seattle, you might also find the regional scenery in here. For instance, Orbix Mesh Alaska. If we were flying in Alaska, not only would you choose Anchorage, but you'd also choose this Alaska mesh. And there's a picture of what it looks like. So we're flying into St. Louis. We use this uh, KSTL Lambert field. That's what it looks like. And we've selected that. And that is it. We're ready to push fly, launch the simulator, and away we go. Now, you remember the video of how long it took to get simulator running not anymore because we have a very thin community file instead of that big fat over bloated community file we're going to be loading I, I hate to use the word lickety split but a whole lot faster than we otherwise would if you remember that video one of the programs I always need to have running in the background. It comes from my F. I have a folder, MSFS external apps. These are external programs. Look at how big this is. External apps, and we need this one called FSUIPC, Flight Sim Internet Protocol number seven. And what this program does, it allows Flight Sim to talk to other external programs. So get that started and running and then once it's running I can use another external program that I depend on Okay, it's uh, it's having some growing pains. Let's make sure that that uh, air traffic program really depends on that FSUIPC. So let's make sure FS. And it, it look, if you look at the screen in the background, look at how fast we're loading in. Just amazing. I used to go out and make breakfast and. Okay, FSUIPC is running, so we shouldn't have a problem with our air traffic control program. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Today's flight from Louisville, Muhammad Ali International Airport in Kentucky, over to St. Louis Lambert Field, St. Louis International. RAS Pro is an automated runway environment awareness program made by a company called FS2 Crew. Most of FS2 Crew's software likes you to install it after you're loaded into the airport. And what I like to do is once I get myself on the airplane, I want to take care of all the computer related issues first and that allows me to put that all aside compartmentalize my brain put that all aside and then I can get into the act of enjoying a um, undistracted 
flight experience to as much a level as of realism as I can reasonably achieve. So uh, we'll certainly do that. Um, let's see what else I want to get started here. Okay, so we have the air traffic control program. And one of the late uh, features that's recently been incorporated is the ability to bring your flight plan over from SimBrief. So here's our flight plan. We used to have to type it all out. SimBrief, here we go. We are departing on runway 29 using the Apollo 6 departure, arriving by way of the Bush 3 arrival to runway 30 left. Our transitions are Apollo and VOR called Papa X-ray Victor. FS realistic. We are landing on runway 30 left, our approach. Now, if you look at this right now, we come in. There's no real way of getting on the runway. We don't have an approach set up. But when we pick an approach, the ILS to 30 left, then we can um, load that in. And we'll not only get our guidance to the runway, but we'll get our missed approach path and our missed approach holding point. So all that is very critical. Come over here to configure and you want to, if you were flying in Europe or Canada, you'd click the de use decimal instead of point. Make sure you got the correct airline selected. And... That's looking pretty good. Ready to fly over here. 737-700, Louisville. We want to choose our gate. And... Flight conditions, we got Floyd's clouds all loaded in there. Winter sky with snow. That, that sounds delightful for the end of January. Voices, Stefan is my co-pilot today. He is German. This is Microsoft Stefan. He will be your co-pilot for the fleet. And his speed is set to zero. I want Stefan to speak to me conversationally. But you'll notice that most people in aviation, myself included, always speak a little fast. So everyone else's speech has been accelerated. A little snow here in Louisville this morning. That looks actually, that looks great. You can hear those jet bridges in the background. What that's telling me is that the add-on, traffic add-on, FS traffic is working. You can see some American liveries going on. This isn't much of a passenger terminal at all. Delta has a very small presence at this airport. Nobody really has a large presence, as you can see. The big presence is across the field over there on the other side of the runways. That's United Parcel Service. This is UPS's domestic hub. So let's uh, get the jet bridge attached. Okay, what's going on here? It doesn't like our location for some reason. Okay, well, we'll go to we'll go to the location that it wants. What the heck? Just warp me there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I don't care where I am. <laughs> okay, got to make GSX happy, right? Operate the jet bridge, and we're going to use Delta. And here comes the jet bridge. Our entry door is closed. So we'll change that real fast.
you can see the jet bridge is open, the entry door is open, and the door to the outside is open too. We're actually even getting some snowflakes here in the cabin. And as a good captain does, I always like to just take a little time out and walk the cabin. Make sure that the beer cans and wine bottles from the crew party held in here last night have all been removed. Check the aft entry here in the back and make sure these are armed and the slides are locked, slides are armed. Make sure all these cabins won't go sliding around. <sighs> Just like a good ship's captain walks the ship inside and out, a good airplane captain does the same. And we're now ready to enter the flight deck. But we're not ready to sit down quite yet. Let's look at the fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher level is in the green. We can check the oxygen of the jump seat passenger here. We can check the airworthiness certificate and the registration certificates. We'll check the for the uh, breathing external uh, breathing apparatus. It's basically a chemical hood that you put over your head creates oxygen in an emergency. We'll look to make sure we have the crash axe available. It's there. We can check for the emergency escape rope. This is a, colloquially, this is called the rainbow check. And the rainbow check, you can move your eyes in the shape of a rainbow and look at these items that uh, are behind the flight deck. Check the circuit breakers to make sure they're all in and flush. I like to get my eyes right along the edge and go up and down. You can check the circuit breakers on the captain's side. Here on the floor, we can check the gravity-fed emergency landing gear release valves. There they are. We can also see that we have an extra set of landing gear pins. We have landing gear pins in the landing gear, but if we land off airport or in a place where uh, they've never seen a 737 before, then we're ready for that. Okay, and even before we sit down, what I want to do is to... Uh, get some ground power and I want to call the fuel truck refueling truck is on its way please don't load aircraft until the fuel truck arrives and ask to do it there's the ground power so we have ground power now again we haven't even sat in, we haven't even taken our seats yet so we'll Turn on the ground power. We'll get the battery started. We'll flip these INS switches, align and nav, align and nav. We can rotate this little dial to tell us how long it'll be in the align process. Uh, looks like it's set for instantaneous. Usually it says between seven and nine minutes. We'll have to change our settings a little bit. And we want to check to make sure we are looking at three green on the landing gear here and also here. Down three green down and locked. Fuel cutoff valves are to cut off. Throttle levers are full aft. Flaps and slats levers are retracted. Parking brake I usually like to have on. Wheel chocks are on. Parking brake is not so critical with the wheel chocks, but I like to have it on. And then finally, finally, after we've done all that, we can finally take our seat. Let's load those other helpful programs. One of them is going to be Pushback Express, which handles some of my ground handling.
And the other one, which is much more important, is my virtual first officer, the PMDG, Precision Manuals Development Group, 737 SOP1, and we'll launch that. That is Stefan, my virtual first officer. Now that Stefan is loaded up, let's talk to Stefan. Actually, one more thing I want to do here. Remember I mentioned getting all this stuff out of the way. Our uh, flight traffic program needs to know where we're going. So we're going to tell it KSTL, confirm, and uh, that'll be fine. Let's start setting up. Stefan is having a problem because we're in button control and we should be in voice control. Okay, let's go to voice control. not changing to voice control. Why is that? I'm going to load that program up in a different way. Fuel truck is in position. Okay, we have Please a Please don't truck. load aircraft until the fuel truck... Please use your airplane fuel system to set the desired fuel quantity. Voice control, okay. There's the fuel truck, and he wants me to use the FMC to set the fuel. We need, what do we need for this flight? Uh, I think we need about 8,900 kilos. I'm just guessing. Please use your airplane fuel system to set Lock the desired fuel, fuel 80, quantity. 8,700 kilos. I'm going to give us 10,000. Great. And he's happy. So, well, good morning, Stefan. Let's start setting up. Stefan can't hear me. Morning, Stefan. Let's start setting up. Starting engine one. No, not starting. We have insufficient air pressure for start. Yes, yes, right. Don't start at air engine one. Let's start setting up. Roger. Okay, now Stefan is going to do what he needs to do. And how's our fueling coming along? truck is in position. Are we fueling? Oh, here we go. We're at 1128. So we're about one-tenth of the way there. Still quite a bit of fueling to do. We have our position light on so people outside the aircraft know that there's activity. Let's arm the emergency lights so that the anyone in the cabin can find their way out. We're going to turn on the left aft fuel tank in anticipation of APU start. We'll check the crossfeed valve. Currently it's off. We'll get that light to illuminate. Crossfeed on, valve open, goes to dim. Crossfeed off, valve open, goes to dim, and that is normal. Fuel temperature is negative 7 degrees. That is some cold fuel in the tanks. Displays are set to auto and normal. Navigation switches are to normal. Yaw damper we can turn on after we get the APU started. Spoiler, flight control and alternate valve switches are guarded. We can do a leading edge flaps and slaps test. 
That is okay. Eight minutes in the align process. That's good. Service interphone is off. Dome lights are on. Crew oxygen is fine. Showing three down and locked. Passenger switch is guarded and safety wired. We're going to turn the speaker for the NAV1 radio and the marker beacon on. This is the number three radio and the microphone is set to the pilot flying side. The flight recorder switch is to normal. Mach airspeed warning test system number one. That's fine. Mach airspeed warning test system number two. I'm out for the walk around. And Stefan is going to do his walk around, which is great. Wipers are turned off. Exhaust, exhaust gas temperature is up. You know, usually I don't do this, but it's extremely cold outside. Uh, we're looking at an interior supply duct temperature of, we're providing 21 degrees of temperature, but the ca passenger cabin is sitting at, uh, sitting at 17 degrees. That's not bad. I thought it would be much colder. Um, we're okay. I was going to start the APU prematurely and get the packs going, but we're, we're, we're comfortable. So I'm not going to worry about the, the temperature outside right now. Uh, bus transfer. We're on external power. We're showing 24 volts on the battery, 28 volts and 115 volts. DC and AC respectively are pro being provided by the uh, by ground power. There's nothing coming from the left engine, nothing from the APU, nothing from the right engine. The, uh, the uh, transformer rectifier units, one, two, and three are getting nothing right now. So that's as it should be. Circuit breaker and panel lights are turned up. Supply and equipment cooling is on. Seat belts are off while we're fueling. How's the fueling process going? Are we doing good? Oh, fueling is done. Fueling is done so we can Get the seatbelt sign on. Turn the chimes on. Forward entry door is open. Uh, let's see here. No climb or descent on the cabin pressure. We are vented to the outside, so there's no cabin pressure. We'll do a cockpit voice recorder test. Five seconds. One, two, came on. That's fine. Forward entry door is open. Hydraulics are not actuated. Wing and engine anti-ice are off. Probe heat is off. We'll leave those off until we push from the gate. Window heat we can turn on. Voice recorder is to automatic. Temperatures are fine. Packs are off. Play APU bleed on in anticipation of engine start. 10,000 foot altitude will probably be cleared for an altitude lower than that initially. I believe our field elevation here at Louisville is about 500 feet. Let's check that out. Let's go to one of the approach charts. I don't care which one. And if we look at the field elevation, 501, 499 at the runway. So 500 will be good just in case we need to come back to this airport right away. We'll already have that dialed in. Hi, the security and safety check are all done. Are we good to start boarding? We absolutely can start boarding. Go for it. Thanks. Okay, and we're going to start boarding here. Request boarding. Boarding requested. Yes, we'll get those fine passengers aboard. So, payload. Looks like... We're looking for 96 passengers. Do you want to board crew? No crew. Crew's already aboard. Passengers uh, boarding. 96 started. passengers. Let's say that six of them are in first class, six out of the eight available, and the other 90 are in economy. Cargo today is 3425. So let's put uh, 1425 in the forward. And 2,000 in the aft. And now our cargo is aboard. I hear those passengers coming down the jet bridge. Here they come. 
A fine group, fine-looking group of people. Although many of them, most of them, are getting their heads cut off. <laughs> you, you need to learn to duck a little. You know this this program was mostly written for the Phoenix, and on a Phoenix, you wouldn't be cutting off people's heads. Yeah, they all look wonderful. Boeing 737-700, our engines are rated at 24,000 pounds of thrust. Our air act cycle is current. Position initialization, we are at K S D S Sierra Delta Foxtrot, Louisville Airport. We're at stand number, I forget what gate we're at. tell what gate we're at. I'm not going to worry about it. I think we're at B. We're at B4. I know we're at B4. But I don't think that's in the database. Nope, not in the database. Let's go to the next page and grab our GPS position. We'll enter that right there. Compared to the last position, the aircraft has not been moved, at least not much. We're going to St. Louis today. We are Delta Airlines, flight number 43. And our route today is on the Apollo 6 to Apollo. And then to Papa X-Ray Victor VOR. And then arriving by way of the Bush 3. So I'm back. No issues on the walk around. Runway 29 is our departure runway and we're looking for the Apollo 6. Always choose the runway first and that will cut down on the number of SIDs and stars that you might see. So arriving, we're arriving on runway 30 left and we're coming in on Bush 3. Notice when I hit 30 left, my number of choices narrowed down. And we're using Papa X-Ray Victor for the transition. Activate, execute. Let's look at the legs. No discontinuities. There is one little vector area. I don't like the vector area, so I'll get rid of it. We already have our load in the airplane, so we can you remember when we were uh, back here and we did payload, we already determined our gross weight, our takeoff center of gravity, our zero fuel weight, and our uh, minimum takeoff weight, um, uh, 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 tow, tow, uh, that's something else, not, not minimum. Anyway, we've already calculated these numbers. So that when we come back over here into the flight management computer and we do our uh, zero fuel weight, that's the same number. These are the same numbers. So we're not making those up out of thin air. They've already been calculated. 2.2 on the reserves. Our uh, cost index is 50. Flight level is 280. Average wind. Is two five six at seven seven. Uh, 
Don't worry about that unable to. We're going to do a D-rated takeoff. Our, we're rated at 24,000 pounds, but the computer is going to calculate our performance based on a 20,000 pound output from the engines. And that will provide noise abatement and also extend engine life. We'll have a shallower climb to takeoff. Flap setting of five. We already know our departure runway. Well, actually we don't know our departure runway. We're, we, we might have to come and recalculate this if we're assigned a different departure runway. But we're, get, we're guessing it's going to be 2.9. We asked for 2.9. Um, center of gravity, 25.5. That gives us a trim setting of 5.29 on the trim wheel. And we can verify these V-speeds. Now, when we come out, 5.29 on the trim wheel, which is about one quarter of the way past 5 on the way to six. And this is not an exact science. Let's get this needle one quarter of the way between five and six. And that'll be good for a trim setting. Right there. And we can take our V2 speed 135 and we can put that right up here. 135. And we know our runway is 2.9, so we'll set this here. And pilots use a number of little tricks to help them out. Um, the actual runway may not be perfectly at 2.90 degrees. And this doesn't have to be perfect either. This, the reason we're putting this up here is just to basically remind us where we're going. So 2.90 in the heading, just as a mnemonic device. And I'm guessing we're going to be initially assigned 10,000 feet, but that's not a cleared altitude. So we'll add in a new uh, a little 100 plus. And that reminds me that it's actually, that's not what we're cleared to. That is my guess. A couple of other things to remind us. Notice here on the yoke, we've entered 043 on this little clicker. And that reminds me that we are Delta flight number 43. So all sorts of little trickery to help us remember uh, remember where we are and what we're supposed to be doing. So the programming of the flight computer is complete. Let's do some safety things. Let's do an oxygen test. That's fine on the captain's side. We'll come down here before we start the APU. We want to test out the squibs. We got the squibs for the APU fire bottles and the squibs for the engine fire bottles. Those test fine. We're going to test the fire detection system. That is fine. And we'll test the, do an actual fire test. <laughs> test for smoke in the cargo area. That test is fine. We'll do a ground proximity warning system test. And while that's going on, I'm going to test the autopilot Flight disconnect slow. on the pilot flying side, number Pull one, up. and number two. Wind shear. Wind shear. Number Wind one. Shear. Terrain. Terrain. And number two. Pull up. Airspeed low. Airspeed low. And I'm going to come up here and do a mock, a stall warning test, number one, and number two. And that is fine. So we're looking really good. Looks like the passengers have boarded. Boarding is completed, so we can disconnect the jet bridge. Close that entry door. There it goes.
let's uh Get the APU fired up. Turn the anti-collision light on. Actually, before we get the APU fired up, has Stefan come back from his walk around yet? I hope so, because I pulled the jet bridge. <laughs> I hope that Stefan is back. Um, well, let's say that he has. So um, we'll get the APU fired up. Well, actually, let, let's talk to Stefan. Stefan, are you ready to do... A Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Hi guys, here's the load sheet for you. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Navigation transfer and display switches. Normal auto. Window seat. On. Pressurization mode selected. Auto. Flight instruments. Heading 143, altimeter 2992. Heading one four three altimeter two nine nine two parking brake set and checked engine start levers cut off pre flight checklist completed okay well we better get a clearance and to get a clearance we'll need to connect to that air traffic control program. Louisville Muhammad Ali International Information November 1456 Zulu winds are 345 at 9 or knots. Visibility less than 1 mile in fog. 300 overcast. Temperature 2, dew point 2. Current altimeter is 3024. Arriving and departing runway 35 left, 35 right. Louisville Muhammad Ali International Information November 1456 Zulu winds are 345 at 9 or knots. Visibility less than one mile in fog. 300 overcast. Temperature 2, dew point 2. Current altimeter is 3024. Arriving and departing runway 35 left, 35 right. Louisville Muhammad Ali International That's, Information uh, November 1456. Very strange to have such a high pressure altimeter setting and still be in snow. We've got some snow going on. And that's unusual. To, high pressure is usually indicative of clear skies. But we've got low overcast and snow with high pressure. Very, very strange. Okay, flight director's on. Let's talk to clearance delivery. Louisville clear... Nope, oh, wrong. Checked. Louisville clearance delivery. Delta 4 tree, ready to copy. Delta 43 is cleared to Kilo Sierra Tango Lima. Fly the Apollo 6 departure with the Apollo transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 29. Climb to 7,500 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 4 minutes after departure. Departure on 132.07. Squawk 6366. Delta 43 is cleared to Kilo Sierra Tango Lima. Fly the Apollo 6 departure with the Apollo transition, then as filed. Climb to 7,500 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 4 minutes after departure. Departure on 132.07. Squawk 6366. Delta 43. Delta 43 rear back correct. Altimeter is 3024, contact ground on 121.7 when ready for pushback, have a good morning. Altimeter is 3024, ground on 121.7, Delta 43. Delta 43, that all looks good. Let's talk about our departure, so we'll get a taxi brief. Blue Streak 5427, Roger, uh, left there in November, and... Uh, Slowly tack to the gate. They're just pushing now. I'm going to push them into the alley out of your way. So just uh, let them pull, push into the alley. Taxi right on it. Right, We're heading to that runway 29, uh, we'll go to our gate. Thanks. That which is funny. over here. And we are at B4 at the terminal. So basically, it looks like taxiway Gulf, 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 all the way down to Gulf 1. We'll have full length of 7251 feet. 
on runway 29. That is our taxi briefing, and we'll talk about our departure briefing. We're on the Apollo 6, heading out of 29. Climb heading 290 to intercept 270 to Gladson, then depicted route to Apollo. These waypoints, Dropa, Dime, On Me, and Dows are loaded in the flight computer. So that is the Apollo 6 departure. Other than that, how about the rest of the briefing? Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. Okay. It's going to be a standard pushback and start off the gate. Taxi route will be as assigned by ATC. It will be a left seat takeoff. Using an assumed temperature. Planning a flaps 5 takeoff. Engine and wing anti-ice will be on. Above 80 knots, we will now. reject for fire, engine failure, loss of control, or wind shear. The crew member noticing the abnormality will clearly state the problem. I will call reject or continue. If the decision is to reject, I will close the thrust levers and disengage auto throttle. Observe or apply maximum braking, raise speed brakes, apply maximum amount of reverse thrust consistent with conditions and bring the aircraft to a complete stop on the runway, stow the speed brake, and set the parking brake, advise the cabin, this is the captain speaking, remain seated, remain seated. I will then perform any necessary memory items or checklists as appropriate. If an evacuation is required, I will initiate the evacuation checklist. In the event of an engine failure after V1, we will continue the takeoff rotate at VR, call positive rate gear up, and cancel the master caution. There will be no other calls below 400 feet. At 400 feet, I'll call for a roll mode, then call confirm the failure. If required, we'll perform any necessary memory items, climb at V2 to V2 plus 20 to 1,000 feet AFL or TOCA, whichever is higher. Retract flaps on schedule. When flaps have been retracted at or above, flaps up, maneuver speed, call for level change if VNAV is not engaged. Set max continuous thrust and call for the appropriate emergency checklist. We are under our maximum landing weight, so we are okay to make an immediate return. The departure routing will be via the ATC assigned SID, complying with all published speeds and altitude restrictions. We'll use NADP-1. Flight directors are on. Mine is master, yours is slave. Navigation radios are set. The NOTAMs and the aircraft defect log have been reviewed. Birds are in the area, so we will see and avoid as best we can. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Remote question. Departure brief complete. Hey folks, welcome on board Delta Flight 43 to St. Louis. This is your captain. As you noticed, we're going through a de-ice procedure. It shouldn't take too long. We, the air conditioning is not on uh, while this happens, but we'll get the air conditioning started here very shortly. Let's start up the AP, uh, first officer, let's start up the APU. Anti-collision light on, fuel pump on, APU to start. Low oil pressure light should be coming on here soon. There it is. Exhaust gas temperature gauge should climb. There it goes. Once it falls into its operational range, we'll get an APU available. The icing and anti-icing completed. Anti-icing code is fluid type. One, concentration at 75%. I'm disconnected. Good day. We have APU, we're going to transfer on to the APU. Let's take a look at the voltages coming out of the APU. 28 volt DC, 115 volts AC, it's stabilized, it's good current. Transformer rectifier units are all getting their power. So that is as it should be. Let's turn on uh, the rest of the fuel pumps in anticipation of engine start. For right now, we'll get the air conditioning on. That'll be coming off here in just a bit for engine start. But that all looks pretty good. Let's run a uh, let's run a before start checklist. 
before start checklist. Check. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board our flight today. This is the lead flight attendant speaking. Please direct your attention to the cabin crew for important safety information. Before there start is checklist. Card in your Stand by. We got 4702, just let your crew traffic off the left on the inner gate after you vacate it. Brickyard 4702, copy. Lighted information signs and bullets and placards. Fasten your seatbelt by inserting the metal tip. Okay, thanks. No problem. Have a safe flight. To release your seatbelt, hey guys, all packs are on board. Are we clear to close? It is that you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times while seated. Go for it. are clearly marked with exit signs and instructions for door operation. Thanks, it will be a long taxi. Locate the exit nearest you, the nearest exit may be behind you. Thanks, it will be a long In taxi. The lights will illuminate the aisle. The cabin is pressurized. If there is a loss yes. of cabin pressure, a panel will open and oxygen masks will appear. Remain seated with yes. your seatbelt fastened and pull a mask towards you to start ah, the flow okay. of oxygen. oxygen <laughs> trying to tell her it's okay to close. Even though the bag may not inflate. Cover your nose and mouth with the mask. Place the elastic band around your head. Before start and checklist. On the end. Secure your own Before start checklist. Flight deck door closed and locked. MCP. Your seat bottom cushion may be used as a flotation device. Pull up and remove the cushion. Upon exiting the aircraft, V2135. Heading 290. Altitude 7500. Is not permitted in the cabin or laboratory. Cabin lights will now be turned off. Reading light buttons are located above your seat. Thank V2. You for your 135, heading 290, altitude 7500. Take off speeds. V1, 129, VR, 131, V2, 135. CDU pre flight. Completed. Rodder and alien trim. Free and zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Anti collision light on before start checklist completed. What I like to do is have the route page on the pilot flying side and have the performance page on the first officer side. Brakes are set to RTO. Flight directors are on. The MCP panel is set up. We need to get a clearance for push. Louisville ground. Delta 43 requests pushback and engine start. Delta 43 pushback and engine start approved. Pusha vacant engine start approved. Delta 43. icing conditions. Please stand by until push is completed and brakes are set. Okay, we're going to hold off an engine start. What's that uh, ground power unit still doing attached? I thought we released him. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Release the ground power unit. Remove the chocks. Here. 
Release parking brakes. Commencing push. Due to icing conditions, please stand by until push is completed and brakes are set. Southwest 1229, are we still clear to push back uh, gate 4? Yes, sir, Southwest 1229, you'll push back to Bruiser. Uh, it looks like there's uh, some, some ground crew still on there's somebody behind it. Uh, I can't see back there, but when able, go ahead and uh, push back. When able, push back, Southwest Done the before start checklist. Start sequence is two, then one. Check. Let's uh, fire them up, baby. Let's get the packs off temporarily for engine start. Build our air pressure. We can turn on the pedo heat, we can turn on the yaw damper. We have air pressure for engine start. Ground on number two, ignition on the right-hand side. Our N2 is building nicely. Ground southwest 473. Looking Over for 20%. Southwest 473, you push off at gate nine is approved. There Looking goes fuel into number two. We'll wait for a good light off. There's the light. Okay, we'll go back upstairs. Ignition on the left-hand side. Ground for the number one engine. Getting N2 rotation on number one. Looking for 20%, N2. There's 20%, and away it goes. We can turn on the uh, transponder and the TCAS system. Put the transponder into altitude reporting, traffic advisory and resolution mode, and altitude reporting mode on the transponder. Let's prepare for a flight control check. The engines are looking good, so we'll tell the ground power ground crew that they're dismissed. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine to start. You can disconnect. Flight control check. Here. Elevator full forward, no binding, full deflection, elevator full aft, no binding, full deflection.
right aileron, no binding, full deflection, left aileron, Tow no binding, connected. full deflection, bypass pin removed, right rudder, left rudder, left no binding, clear. right is clear, speed brakes, that's fine, your turn, There's our landing gear pins. We're on American Maintenance at 32. American Maintenance. Sir, I need to reposition the south parking. American Maintenance, Roger, your pushback is approved. Tail north on Kilo. Let me know when you're ready for the reposition. Okay. Tail north on Kilo. And we're done with ground handling. Louisville ground, Delta 4 Tree requests taxi runway 29. Delta 43 taxi to runway 29 via taxiways Mike, Golf, hold short runway 35 right. Taxi to runway 29 via taxiways Mike, Golf, hold short runway 35 right Delta Force 3. Okay, looking for 29. Out here we go to Bravo and then down Gulf, all the way down Gulf. Let's sting the cabin crew. Hi, it's Andy at L1. How can I help you? Just letting you know we're on our way. Taxi lights on, engines to continuous fire, hydraulics on, dual bleed is off, packs can come back on, isolation valve to normal. Parking brake off. Brake check. Brake check is fine. Flaps five. Before taxi checklist. Stand by. Engine and wing anti ice coming on. Before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist, generators on, probe heat on, anti ice, engine and wing anti ice are on, isolation valve, auto, engine start switches, continuous, recall. Set and checked. Checked, auto brake, RTO, engine start lever. Continuous. Oh, uh, idle detent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> idle detent. Flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Clear before taxi checklist completed. Okay.
like we're not the only one flying today. American 466, right American 466, Roger. Uh, hold right there, get you moving, references traffic, touch it down. And for American 466, let's slowly start south on Kilo. Slowly south on Kilo. Yeah, we're going to uh, hold position here for American 466. Yeah, I see it there. Yeah, okay, thanks. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist, flaps. Flaps five, green light. Stabilizer trim. Set and checked. Before takeoff checklist completed. The clear to cross runway 35 right. Clear to cross runway 35 right, Delta Force 3. By the way, uh, we're cleared to 7500, but our pressure setting is set to 10,000. That's fine. We're going to be getting a clearance over 7500 almost immediately. Point two Delta Force three. Some C one thirties. Part of the uh, air reserve or air guard. Beautiful airport. It is payware. So you get what you pay for. Let's look for traffic on approach. Arm the auto throttle. Landing lights on. Strobe light on. Start the clock. 
Louisville Tower, Delta 4 Tree, ready for departure, runway 29. Delta 43, contact ground on 121.7 for taxi instructions. Ground on 121.7 for taxi. Delta 4 3. Delta 43, winds are 3 4 5 at 9 and knots cleared for takeoff, runway 29. Cleared, cleared take for takeoff, take runway 29, Delta 4 3. Runway entry procedure. Okay. Cabin crew, take your seats. Clear on the approach. Cabin is still not secure. Come on, cabin, hustle it up. They better hustle their little tush to the seats. Approaching two nine. Thanks, fourteen twenty heavy. Turn right at the mic two. Sierra Charlie, call ramp control there. Two Sierra Charlie, we'll call the ramp. Thanks, thanks, fourteen twenty heavy. On runway two nine. Take off. Toga mode. Approaching. Trusted. Three, five, right. Eighty knots. Rotate. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Positive rate. And gear up. Flaps one. Four hundred feet. Speed checked. Delta forty three contact. Departure on 132.07. Enjoy your morning. DAPR on one three seven Delta Force three. DAPR Tour Delta Forty three climbing to seven thousand five hundred feet. Delta forty flaps up. Speed checked. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist, engine bleeds on, packs, auto, landing gear, up and off, flaps, up. No lights after takeoff checklist complete. Happy to release the cabin crew. Yes, please. Okay. Climb to one six thousand feet, Delta Force three. Delta forty three contact Indianapolis Center on one two four point six two. Enjoy your morning. Center on one two four point six two. Take care, Delta Force three. Center Delta forty three climbing to one six thousand feet. Coming up. 
Forming a pond 10,000 feet. Ten thousand. Happy to release the cabin. Yes, please. Okay. Portable electronic devices may now be used, with the exception of TVs, radios, two-way transmitters, or any other device in a transmit mode, as these devices may interfere with the aircraft's communication and navigation systems. Greetings from up front, folks. Just a reminder, we have a very quick flight today, so when that seatbelt sign comes off, you'll want to take advantage of it, because it'll be coming back on for descent relatively soon. Anyway, welcome aboard Delta Airlines one more time. Uh, best service in the industry provided by our onboard crew, and wish you an enjoyable flight. Center Delta 43 climbing to 16,000 feet. Delta 43 Altimeter is 3022. Altimeter is 3022 Delta 43. Let's turn on the anti ice in anticipation of cloud penetration. Oh, engine in. Lead and ice are already on. Good job, first officer. Good job. Actually, wing engine anti ice is on. We'll also turn on wing anti ice. See what I mean by Floyd's clouds? They are absolutely the best. You will not be sorry if you get caught in Floyd's cloud. Floyd's clouds. Executive 728, change to my frequency 132.42. 132.42 is your directly. Approaching top of climb. Actually, that's, I'm sorry, we're not near top of climb yet. 28,000 feet is top of climb. We're approaching transition. We're in transition. Transition. Standard pressure. Transition set standard. Standard set. not going to have a whole lot of time for the folks to get up and about so let's turn off the seatbelt sign now while we can
you have control. I have control. Okay, and then while you have control, I'm going to set up our descent. So let's go to. Number 104, uh, Papa Kilo, radar contact position, check, boy altimeter is 296, maintain VFR, south. Uh, We're going to use a 40 degree uh, flaps uh, landing today. So we'll set that in our primary display. ILS frequency is 111.5 with a course of 303. three in the course setting on both sides. And that the three expected wish three arrival with the peaks who transition for the LS approach to room by prefero left at the same to Islam that international. Expect the bus has re arrival with the PXV transition for the ELS approach to run by 30 left delta for 3. Okay, so 111.5 is set on the captain and the first officer's side for our reference. I'm already starting to hear, I'm starting to hear a, an identifier from somewhere, but I don't think it's our airport. So let's talk about the approach. 1000 to level. St. Louis charts. We're on the uh, Bush 3. Delta 43, climb to flight level 280. Climb to flight level 280, Delta for 3. On the Bush 3 arrival to runway 30 left. From cue ball on track 356 to Dina, then Hertzu and Temi, then via assigned instrument approach procedure. If approach clearance is not received by Temi, then on track 356, expect radar vectors to final approach. So these waypoints and these constraints have been entered into our flight computer. Boosh, cue ball, and OJ, and continuing on. And the purple section is radar vectors on to final approach. So that is our arrival, taxi, be coming in on runway 30 left and the terminals will be off on our left so we'll want to take the high speed at Quebec probably or Romeo could possibly make November but it's uh, November Quebec or Before Romeo Roger, two areas of moderate precipitation area. at uh, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock and they Start in five miles, extend for about one zero miles. Are you ready for the approach brief? Go ahead. Are you ready for the approach brief? Okay. The arrival routing will be via the ATC assigned star, complying with all published speeds and altitude restrictions. For an ILS approach, planning a flaps 40 landing. Final approach fix altitude is 9,000 feet. Decision altitude is 2. 
zero zero feet. Missed approach altitude is nine thousand feet. Runway condition is contaminated, so leave the flaps down so we can have the flap tracks inspected. Taxi route in will be as assigned by ATC. We'll be arriving at a gate. Birds are in the area, so we will see and avoid as best we can. Descent speeds and navigation radios are set. Airport notums have been reviewed. Any questions, comments, or concerns? No questions. Approach brief complete. 1,000 to level. For a good long time, I would request a higher altitude and get out of the, some of the soup. But uh, we're not going to be in it for terribly long. Delta 40, 3 send via the bus pre arrival with the PX2 transition to cross the OCA to your about 3500 feet altimeter is 30428 Louis Lambert International. Descent via the bus has re arrival with the PXV transit on to cross your OCA at your about 3500 feet altimeter is 3042 Delta for 3. So we have been cleared via the descent, so as long as we stay on the profile of the approach procedure, we have been cleared to those step-down altitudes to a minimum of 3,500 feet. So I'm going to set 3,500 feet in the altimeter. And I'm going to, what did he say was our altimeter setting was 3042. Okay, so we're on standard pressure, but the local setting right now is 3042, and we'll keep that updated so that when we come back into local pressure, we'll, we'll have that already set. Here's our reference. Uh, flap setting and speed and one other thing we want to get is our decision height and there's two ways of calculating decision height you can either let the radar altimeter decide decision height it's 200 feet above ground level jet, based on the radar altimeter or you can do what we're going to do and use it on barometric pressure so we're coming in on Three zero left, and the touchdown elevation at three zero left is five hundred and eighty three feet. So decision height would be seven hundred and eighty three feet. We'll, we'll dial that in. So right now, Barrow is 783 feet. If we were to use the radio option, it would be radio and then 200 feet. So the radar altimeter plus 200 feet would be our decision height. But we're gonna keep it in Barrow mode. 783 feet based on the altimeter and that depends on a very accurate altimeter pressure setting so
So we got those un 280 unable, 280 unable. The reason why we got the unable 280 is because the constraint at Mopo is to be uh, is uh, below 310. Well, we never made 310. We never got as high as 310. So uh, without that ability, the computer gave us the unable 280. So it was nothing really to be monstrously concerned about. It, had we been, so had we been flying from a further distance away, we would have obviously well, been over 310 feet MSL. Just in case you're curious, this is how the air traffic control program is reading our flight so far. We left Louisville. Alpo was the start, was the ending of our departure procedure. PVX was the beginning of our arrival procedure. The green arrow just before Mopo is the start of top of descent. Our procedure and our approach and our missed approach. Center on Bond 25.3 Delta Force 3. Center Delta 43 at fliegt level 280. Altimeter is 3042 Delta Force 3. Well, folks, from the flight deck, just your captain speaking, just want to give you a reminder, just a few minutes to go and we'll be entering our descent and that seatbelt sign will come back on. So take advantage of the time, stretch your legs, and uh, we'll have you on the ground safe and sound in St. Louis before you know it. I have control. You have control. Descent checklist. Descent checklist. Pressurization. Landing altitude is 600 feet. Recall checked. Auto brake. Level max. Landing data. V ref 131 minimums 200 feet. V ref 131 minimums 200 feet. Approach briefing. Completed. Diese sind Checklist completed.
Sandy at L1. How can I help you? One coffee, please. Okay, I'll bring them up in a minute. Get a uh, low pressure on the center fuel tank. Hi guys, here are the drinks. We're not running out of fuel. It's just we're using up the fuel in the center fuel tank. And the left one gave us the indication. And pretty soon the right one will as well. You can see the center fuel tank is down to almost nothing. Exec Jet 632, descend to maintain 3,200. 3,200, Exec Jet 632. There's Mopo. Delta 43 is low to 280 knots or less. Vehicle Delta 43. Slow to 280 knots or less, okay. We are slowing to 280 knots, even without my help. <laughs> Coming upon top of descent, the engines are now at 80%, but that will uh, drop off precipitously as we start to enter our descent profile. And our descent profile uh, According to the computer's prediction, will come up on our display here on the right. Here it is. You can see we're entering a 1,500 foot per minute descent. Actually, it's more like more than 21, 2,200 foot per minute descent. And we'll let the computer work that all out. Master caution for low fuel. On the right side of the center tank. Come clear of clouds so we can turn off the wing and the engine into ice.
Floyd's Clouds doing a great, great job. We've got some stratus above us and some cumulus below us. A great variety. We don't have, I think when we left we had some what's referred to as towering cumulus. This just looks like popcorn clouds or normal cumulus. Our next constraint is Bush. We should be above 1400 when we reach Bush. Above 14,000 at Bush, between 10 and 11,000 at Dina. Never 4875 would direct Pinto now. Never 4875, thank you. Brakes are set to max. I'm going to do something a little risky here, and I'm going to arm the speed brakes now. And what that means is I'm gambling. I won't have much use for speed brakes. I'm going to control our speed by judicious flap usage and judicious use of inertia. And hopefully I won't have any need for speed brakes. Of course I can always use them if I like them, but we certainly we want the speed brakes to be armed for our landing, and I'm gambling that we'll keep them armed. Um, center on one two five point five Delta four three. Gambling will keep them armed throughout. We're below transition altitude. Center Delta forty three descending to three thousand five hundred feet. Altimeter is 3042 Delta for 3. Transition set altimeter 3042. Two nine nine two set. Set altimeter 3042. Approach checklist. Approaching checklist. Altimeter. 3042 set. 3042 set. Approach checklist completed. Extending to the north, so about 10 south of Charlevoix. Advise you to deviate. Come to pilot's discretion, maintain photo 200. 200, Below 11,000 at Dana, and we are now at 13.5. Cue ball is coming up in four miles.
What I intend to do is going to flat. Once we reach 11,000 before Dana, I'm going to go to flaps one, and we're going to drop our speed from 265 down to 250 when we reach 10,000 feet to keep in line with the speed restriction. So there's cue ball. We're at 11.9, three miles to Dana. So we'll obviously be below 11,000 before we get to Dana. We're going through 11.6, 11.5 right now. Two miles to Dana. Flaps one. Check speed. Cabin crew, prepare for landing. Approach on 132.12, good day. Approach on 132.12, Delta Force 3. Approach Delta 43, descending to 3500 feet. Delta 43, good morning. Continue descent by approach pre arrival for the ILS approach to runway 30 left at St. Louis Land International. Continue descent via the bus has re arrival for the ILS approach to run by 30 left Delta for 3. 10,000. He put the fastened seatbelt sign on. He put the engine start switches to continuous. He put I'm going to put the rest of the landing lights on and the runway and the turnoff lights on. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one set. Final approach fix, height checked, missed approach altitude not set. Delta 43, you are 28 nautical miles southeast of St. Louis Land International Airport. Clear for the ILS Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat back and tray tables are in their upright position. Make sure your seat belt is securely fastened and all carry on luggage is stowed underneath the seat in front of you or to overhead bin. Clear for the ELS approach to run by 30 left after table heading 3502 to join the approach tower on 120.05 Delta for 3. Flaps 5. Flaps 5. Approach Delta for 3 Delta for 3 Speed checked. Tower Gear Delta down. For ELS approach run by 30 left. Delta for 3 Delta for 3 Flaps 5 set. Continue ELS approach to run by 30 left will call when established on final delta for 3. Flaps 15. Speed checked. Speed break up. Okay, Flaps well the speed break set. is arm, but we also have a little bit of extra speed break in that we don't want. It should be just armed, but not deployed. So we'll get the speed, that's what we want. We want that light, but we don't want this light, the speed brake deployed light. Flaps 30. Speed checked. DOR lock on. Flaps 40 set. Approach on dual autopilot. Command A and Command B on. Uh, only
only can, oh, not getting a, a dual lock on the autopilot. Flaps 40. Speed checked. Flaps 40 set. I wonder my, why my uh, autopilot is not taking both A and B. Interesting. Yes, nine three four. Where you parking? You get nine three four. Where you parking today? Going down to uh, Imperial Cargo. You get nine three four. Thank you. Flight deck. Okay, thanks, Captain. The cabin is secure. Well, nine miles to Joyce. You can see downtown St. Louis there ahead of us. The archway. Should be that barely see the St. Louis Arch. Traffic at three o'clock. You know, I don't mind traffic callouts, but when I get really close on an ILS approach, I don't want traffic callouts. I want air traffic control to keep that traffic away. So we're going to get a nice view of downtown St. Louis, including the Gateway Arch as we're on our way in. I'm just kind of mildly concerned why I'm not getting command A and command B on the on the autopilot. Delta 43, you have traffic at 3 o'clock, 7 miles at 9, at 100 feet. Six miles to Joyce. You can tell that the Lambert St. Louis Airport is inland. This is the Mississippi River. There's downtown St. Louis and the Gateway Arch. And the airport is right along this interstate, but it's inland a ways from downtown. This community is West St. Louis, Illinois. miles to Joyce I still would love to get that command B there it is command A and command B may I just didn't wait quite long enough patience 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 my mom tried to teach me that and it never took <laughs> wow what a view of downtown what a great view of downtown St. Louis Oh, fleet little police activity down there on the interstate. Of course, it's on. There's two police cars. All the bad things happen in East St. Louis. <laughs> right there is the archway. Wow, what a view! That's why you get Microsoft Flight Simulator for views like that. 
Oh, there's some police activity on the St. Louis side. There's a television helicopter flying down to the police activity. Wow, there's quite a bit of police activity. Radio altimeter live. Cabin crew, take your seats. Delta for Uti Grid, you have traffic at 11 o'clock, 10 miles at 700 feet. Keep that traffic away from me, air traffic control. One mile to Joyce. We've captured localizer. And tower just for a we are below light slope. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Continuous. Speed brake. Armed. Landing gear. Down and locked. Down. Flips. 40, green light. Landing checklist completed. Terminals on the left, high speeds are on the left. Glide slope coming into range. Slide slope captured. One thousand set. Stable. Approaching. Three. Zero. Left. Land three. Auto land. Roll out and flare. Are controlled by the aircraft. Six nine heavy right turning golf taxi out for parking. All right, golf Looks like by the airplanes at the gate, mostly Southwest Airlines. Delta Forty Three Wings are three five two one one left. Clear to land runway three zero left. Clear to land runway three zero left. Delta Forty Three. Healthy amount of traffic on the interstate. Looks by the aircraft that the flight uh, FS traffic program has added a good smattering of aircraft. It's nice to see. Our only five hundred feet. Four hundred. 
continue. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Speed break up. Delta forty three exit on Y one A. Reverse is normal. Sixty knots. Okay to clean up. Roger. Goodness. Well, folks, I'm having some steering issues. Yesterday I went through the whole day with steering issues. Oh, there we go. Oh, what's going on here? Ah, I'm having some steering issues. Oh, okay. Having some steering issues. APU on the buses. Okay. Look at this airport. It's beautiful. This is a payware airport, and you can see part of this airport was destroyed by a tornado several years ago. You can go to the concourse that was destroyed, you'd never know it. They've done such a great repair job. Let's get those flaps up. Tower Delta Four Tree clear and be active. Tower Delta Four Tree clear of active. Delta 43 contact ground on 121.07 in the Eider Mobile. Ground on 121.07 Delta 43. Delta 43 363, monitor 100.1. 91, we have Yankee, Carolina, 363, have a good day. Parking brake on. Fuel cutoff valves. The boarding requested. Seatbelt sign off. All these lights can come off. Position lights stay on. Probes are off. Window heat can come off. Passengers, the boarding starting. Thank you. Thank you. Here they come. Look at these smiling people. Oh my gosh, they are so happy to be in St. Louis. Yes, they are. Thank you, thank you. Shutdown checklist. Shutdown checklist. Fuel pumps off, probe heat off, hydraulic panel set, flips. 
Up. Parking brake. Set. Engine start lever. Thank you. Cut Thank off. Ladder radar. Right. Off. Off. Shut on checklist completed. Secure the aircraft. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you for a wonderful flight. Secure checklist. Secure checklist. IR is off. Emergency exit lights off. Window heat off. Packs off. Secure checklist complete. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You too. Bye, thank you for a wonderful flight. Thank you very much, goodbye. Thank you, goodbye. Bye, thank you for a wonderful flight. Well, thank you, Stefan, for joining me today. There go the bags. The people are off. The bags are fairly well. And you can see the people walking outside the jet bridge there. And the people are off. The bags are on their way off. The airport is beautiful. We have a snowy day here. We successfully made it from Louisville to St. Louis and our Delta Airlines Boeing 737 and I had a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed the ride you and to -board crew. Uh, let's deboard the crew. Yes, let's deboard crew the crew. Boarding starting. There's the cabin crew. get to see the flight crew. Come on, flight crew, I know where you live. Your crew has deboarded. I guess we're not going to see the pilots to board, are we? I think the pilots may have gone out before the cabin crew. We did catch it. Okay, well, folks, that is the conclusion of our flight today, and that is my first branded flight as Seattle Aviator, hopefully the first of many to come. And what you're going to find from me on my video is... Anybody can fly these uh, wonderful flights, but what I try to bring is a is an integrated experience. So when you take my flight, you're going to get all the third-party add-ons, the air traffic control, the ground handling, all the ambiance added together, and I hope that adds value to your flight simming experience, and I hope you are better for the journey. I know that I am, and I hope to see you again soon.